Well, let's return now to one of our top stories. Cyclone Kiralee has strengthened to a Category 2 system as it moves towards the Queensland coast. Residents, as we've been reporting, have been filling sandbags and they're really readying their homes ahead of the storm's impact. But cyclone researchers are also busily gearing up to monitor and, and learn from the storm that's about to hit. Let's bring in one of them now. Joining us live is Dr David Henderson. He's Chief Engineer of the James Cook University Cyclone Testing Station. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for your time. Firstly, give us an update. What's the very latest? Where's the cyclone now? How's it looking? How bad might this one be? Um, that's the Met Bureau to do that. Uh, we do we do structural engineering stuff. So the cyclone is out there. The latest track forecast is still bringing it in um, between Townsville and, um, and air. But that's definitely to all re residents to follow the cyclone stations, so it's follow the disaster dashboards from the local councils. Uh, what the cyclone testing station does, we've got anemometers, we've got and put our swell net anemometers out across Townsville. We're trying to look at what the wind speeds are, measure the wind speeds in amongst the community to try to get as much information on this really chaotic, turbulent, um, dynamic um, wind event so that we can understand our load, the wind loads that our houses have to survive, that they have to be up for. So we use this information. Our anemometers are at house height, so they're not at like a, the, what the Met Bureau would have. It would be 10 metres in flat open terrain. Our anemometers are built, so we're trying to measure the wind speeds that are really impacting on our typical house. Okay, and so when you do that in terms of looking at how severe that will be, what will it feel like, what will it sound like uh, for Townsville residents when it does hit and how are you expecting most houses to fare? Uh, the, in terms of our building codes and standards, we've learned a lot since uh, Cyclone Tracy. There was major changes in how we design, build and construct uh, our housing uh, in the in the 80s and going into the 90s. So modern houses that have been designed and built correctly and maintained appropriately should be weathering the storm, you know, uh, appropriately with it. It uh, doesn't mean that, you know, we should be complacent, that we should be doing all the cleanup, we should be, um, uh, you know, uh, making sure that, yeah, you know, trees are pruned back, all those things have been done. So we're protecting our house. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of wind-driven rain coming into our modern housing. Uh, so again, there's there's information on the on the, the emergency services dashboards for taping up on the inside of your window around the window sills to try to stop the wind-driven rain coming in and getting down into the carpets and electrics and things like that with it. Uh, for older housing, this is, could be an issue in terms of category two, category three um, type of wind speeds. Some of the older housing um, is not being built for that. Uh, there's been a lot of upgrading done to the older homes, but again, this is getting to a wind speed where we could start seeing damage. Okay, Currently, I mentioned sandbagging. You were just talking there about yeah, boarding up and, and taping up windows, which is obviously uh, something that people do as well. What about mattresses against windows? What's the, the best tips, do you think, in terms of what people should be doing when they're actually expecting it to hit? Should people be unplugging devices, for example? Uh, again, the greatest source of information is on the council's dashboard and on emergency services dashboard. They've got great checklists to go through and run through all those different things. Um, it may be if you've got solar panels, you might have to go and flick the switch off them at solar panels and turn off the master switch to it just in case you do lose power um, and you want to run a generator or something like that as well. So there's all those different aspects to it. Um, in terms of the, the windows and taping to try to stop water coming in under your, your sliding glass doors, uh, we can get garbage bags, cut the garbage bag in half, and on the inside of the sliding glass, no, not the outside, on the inside, tape along the bottom of the sill and up a little bit, and it actually increases the sill height. So as that water's blowing, the pressure, and it's driving that wind and rain into, driving that rain into your house through the weep holes, that plastic is acting like a much bigger sill. And so it's catching the water and allowing it to drain back outside. So we see a lot of damage coming from that um, on, in modern housing for those types of what we might think is minor things, but they cause a lot of issues, especially if it's on a, on a two-storey um, balcony door, things like that. David Henderson, sounds like that uh, you've got a busy 24 hours ahead. We hope it's not uh, too severe in terms of the impact there, but really appreciate you taking us through all of that. Thanks so much. Thank you.